Hi guys, Rahul Shire trying to make investing accessible and profitable for the average investor. Now, a few days back, I was going through an interesting article uh, detailing the top six investments made by Warren Buffett, you know, in his multi-decade career. Now, this article was dated uh, 2013-14 and therefore I did not have his recent investments but the number one investment uh, on that list was pretty interesting and the company was Petro China a stock which he invested in I think somewhere in 2003-2004 and the reason it was his number one investment uh, because he made more than three billion dollars on his 500 million investment in the company. Over a period of, you know, three to four years, that stock turned out to be a multi-bagger for Warren Buffett. And the story uh, behind how he zeroed in on this stock is pretty interesting. It so happened that, uh, you know, in 2002, 2003, when he made this, this investment, this the annual report of this company, uh, PetroChina, was lying on his desk and he just picked it up and he realized that the company was a colossal company you know it was one of the largest oil and gas companies in china had a terrific history and when he you know just uh, sort of went through the different pages of the annual report and tried to look at the historical performance of the company uh, his back of the envelope calculation showed that the company was worth at least hundred billion dollars based on a conservative estimate and the stock was trading at 40 billion dollars in the stock market so there was a huge undervaluation uh, you know as per Warren Buffett's estimate and he felt that even a conservative estimate uh, you know conservative method of valuing the company would have resulted into huge gains and that's why he went ahead and made that US dollar 500 million investment and he of course over the years made all that money on the stock uh, he cashed out three four years later making a profit of a whopping three billion dollars or slightly more if my memory serves me right uh, so it's just a fascinating case study if you ask me now another story uh, that came to my mind when i was sort of reading this uh, warren buffett story was of Einstein and his wife, uh, you know, paying a visit to a very sophisticated uh, observatory, you know, the place where they keep all those telescopes and, uh, you know, those high profile stuff that they gaze into the sky with and, you know, come up with uh, answers to or try and solve the mysteries of the universe so as the guys were showing Einstein and his wife around the observatory and as they were bragging about you know the te different kinds of telescopes they had and the kind of R&D they were doing and the kind of investments that made into that went into creating that observatory uh, Einstein's wife uh, you know at, at the end of it all she smiled and said you know what my husband Albert does all of these calculations on the back of an envelope yeah so uh, you know the the both these uh, examples warren buffett and einstein they tell you the power of simplicity you know uh, they tell you how if you stick to fundamental principles and simple rules uh, success is not that difficult you don't have to do very complex things in order to uh, you know be successful in your respective fields of course, in the case of Einstein, in the field of science, uh, intelligence matters a great deal. Uh, the way your mind works, how you think matters a great deal. But when it comes to investing, what matters is a sound framework of investing. If you have sound rules with which to invest, if you have sound framework of investing, then uh, spending a lot of time on the company and building those spreadsheets and trying to visit the managements and you know projecting the company's earnings three four five years out does not matter it is uh, you know it is of uh, less relevance if you ask me if you have a sound framework you don't have to do all of these things if 
you have a good framework of investing and if you follow that framework what warren buffett did was what warren buffett did when he invested in petro china was he's following a very simple framework very simple rule you know of trying to arrive at say a uh, a rough approximation of the intrinsic value of the company and then buying it at a huge discount buying it at a huge margin of safety and he knew that even if uh, his uh, numbers even if they were off by a great margin he wouldn't lose a lot of money in fact he would maybe make a small return even if his numbers were off by a significant margin so that is the power of you know having a sound framework of for investing when it comes to the indian stock market does any such framework exist do you have a framework can you create a framework uh, using which you can invest in the indian stock market and not do any of the complex stuff like you know build detailed excel models of the company or try and attend the management conference calls or you know project the eps of the company 3 5 years out can you using simple principles spend say just a few hours every year and create a portfolio of stocks that's good enough to give you a good performance and is able to outperform the benchmark index by a significant margin so what i have done is you know i try to create exactly such a framework of such a framework of investing which has very simple rules which is not that hard to follow and which does not require frequent follow ups or which does not require doing all the other stuff that a typical analyst does all you have to do is you know spend a few hours every year and uh, you know apply this framework with discipline uh, you know and uh, have the patience required for the results to start coming in so what is this framework of investing that i am talking about and what are the rules of it so let's just try and understand this framework of investing and then see how this framework has performed you know between the time period of december 2017 and uh, you know september 2021 all period of almost 4 years so let's see what the framework is first and then see how this framework would have performed if you had used this framework in the indian stock market uh, or use this framework to identify small cap stocks so what are what are the different rules of this framework now the number one rule is uh, you know the the mistake that people make when investing is uh, they get too excited or they make they take significant exposure to stocks when the stock market has gone up a great deal and when the stock market crashes they get scared out of the positions and they reduce exposure to stocks in fact you should do the other way around uh, you know when the stock market is down you should allocate more money to stocks and when the stock market is uh, you know has had a very good run or is up 50 100% from its high you should try and reduce allocation to stocks now a rule which will force your mind to do this is to have a 75 25 allocation between stocks and uh, say fds and rebalance this at the end of every year so 31st december if you have 100 rupees you're putting 75% into stocks 25% into fds if after one year the stock market has gone up which means that your stock portion has has gone up more than 75% you bring it back to 75% and put the remaining in fds likewise if the stock market has fallen you increase the allocation to stocks at the end of the year and reduce the allocation to fd so that it's again back to 70 for 25 levels now what this rule will do is it will force you to buy stocks when the market is down and it will force you to reduce exposure to stocks when the market is up so it will allow you to do the right thing from a long term perspective so one of the rules the first rule is a 75 25% allocation to stocks and fds and you rebalance that every year second rule is you should have a definite buying rule now what i mean by this is you know investing is all about buying a 100 rupee note at rupees 80 or lower right so if the you should have you should be able to figure out the intrinsic value of the company like warren buffett did with petro china and then ensure that you're buying the stock at least at a 20% discount to the intrinsic value 
Now, one of the ways of doing this is you assume that the book value of a company, the latest book value of the company is a proxy for the intrinsic value of the stock. You assume that the intrinsic value of every stock out there is equal to the book value of the company and you buy the stock only if it trades at 0.8 times or lower of the book value of the company. So if the book value of the company is rupees 100, you're buying it at rupees 80 or lower and you're not buying the company if the book value is more than 80, uh, you know, 80 or 100 or whatever. You buy it below 0.8 times. That's a definite buying rule. Another thing is the company should not have a lot of debt on its balance sheet. You should buy the company only when the debt to equity ratio of the company is less than 0.5 times. I do not like highly leveraged companies. I do not like companies with a lot of debt because uh, they are risky and uh, there is a risk of an investor incurring a huge loss in a highly leveraged companies if things start to go downwards. So debt is something which you should stay away from and only buy a company if it satisfies these two criteria of being available at below 0.8 times book value and being available at uh, less than 0.5 times debt to equity ratio of the company. The debt of the company should be considerably less than the equity. A definite selling rule. Now here you keep the stock in the portfolio for one year period. The even if you know and then whatever happens to the stock after at the end of the one year period you move it out of the portfolio if it has gone up fine you know you book your profits and move on if it has not gone up again fine you book your losses invest the money you know in some other stock as per the allocation so that's a definite selling rule and of course rebalancing at the end of every year where you rebalance it to 75 25 now you sh you uh, are here you are having a portfolio of 20 stocks equal weighted stocks and you are investing 5% in each stock. So there is no preference given to any particular stock. Uh, so that you know, if you're very bullish on a particular stock, it will have more than 5% allocation. It can have 10, 15% allocation. No, 5% allocation to each stock, equal weighted portfolio of 20 stocks. So these are the four simple rules uh, uh, of your framework. And you're doing this on small cap stocks uh, now, how I define a small cap is I use the SEBI definition, which is that if you arrange the top, you know, 1200, 1250 stocks in the Indian stock market, BSC, you know, on the BSC, if you arrange them in terms of uh, descending order of the market cap, then you leave out the top 250 stocks. Stock number 251 to the next 1000 stocks is the universe that I have considered for this study. And so at the end of every year, 31st December every year, I arrange the stock in the descending order of the market cap, remove the top 250 stocks and consider the remaining 1000 stocks and then use these parameters to arrive at my portfolio of 20 stocks. Now let us look at the performance of the portfolio, what the portfolio would have done. Here it is. Our simple portfolio achieved a CAGR of almost 16% versus a CAGR of 11% achieved by the BAC small cap index. This performance is, you know, impressive if you ask me. Any, anything that's more than 5 percentage points better than the benchmark index is a very good achievement in my view. So a 16% CAGR using the simple framework or 10.5% CAGR of the BAC small cap index I think is a good achievement and it goes to show the power of the simple framework that we are using. Uh, this is better than I think what a lot of investors would end up achieving. If you ask me, majority of the investors out there wouldn't have even achieved the 10.5% CAGR as the basis small cap index is given. Whereas our framework has actually done better. It has achieved a CAGR of almost 16% by following the four simple rules that I highlighted earlier. The framework has done much better than the BAC small cap index and it has given a return of 16% CAGR. Now, of course, I have not taken tax considerations, uh, you know, the tax implications into consideration here. Uh, that can enter the picture 
But even if you include that, I think the return, the performance, uh, based on how simple the framework is, how little time you need to put together a portfolio of 20 stocks and invest in them, when you compare that, you know, the performance is still impressive in my view. So these are the companies, uh, you know, uh, that were the best performers over the years between 17 and 2021 when we use the framework and as you can see uh, something like a Brightcom group has given you a return of as much as 400%, Subex 382%, Ratan India Enterprises 261%, Akshar Chem, Shri Global, you know stocks, uh, the 20 top performers. Now here I have a confession to make. Uh, had I analyzed the performance of some of the stocks on this list, I may not have considered investing in them. But again, I'm going purely by the framework here. I'm not arguing with the framework. If the framework, if my framework is telling me that a certain, to certain stock has to be in the portfolio, I include it in the portfolio and not go and you do my own independent analysis on the stock. So this is what the, you know, uh, this is the portfolio that you get when you let the framework do its job and not meddle in it. So some of the stocks may have dubious fundamentals, but they have performed and that's what matters in my view. So this is the top 20, uh, you know, stocks in terms of performance over the years. Now, what if I run the screen today? What are the kind of stocks, small cap stocks that the screen throws up if I use the buy criteria, the two simple buy criteria that I am using, that I have used between 2017 and 2021 and, you know, oh, got that market beating performance. So the, if I was starting this study now, these are the 20 stocks that I would start with. These are the stocks that are trading at a discount to their book values, a big discount in some cases and also have debt levels well under control. Now, this is not a recommendation, mind you, you know, I'm not recommending you to invest in these stocks right away. Uh, you are advised to run this list through a financial advisors or do your own research. This is just a hypothetical study that, I, you know, I am using. And uh, the hypoth hypothetical study has thrown up these 20 stocks. So these are the stocks. Uh, 20 best small cap stocks uh, which you can hold on to for the next one year and then you know take uh, your decision accordingly so in conclusion uh, what I'm trying to say is investing does not have to be complex just because a lot of people out there make it complex doesn't mean that you have to follow the same principles as the Warren Buffett example showed, as this study showed, use very simple rules, use very simple framework and you can still end up doing a great job over the long term. So keep it simple and uh, you know I think you'll definitely be rewarded over the long term if history is any indication. So that's all from me today. Do let me know what you think of this particular framework. Uh, we look forward to receiving your comments, uh, you know, your, your likes, your dislikes. So do keep them coming and I'll see you again next time. Thank you so much.